hey, it's Jody, Jody Taylor of SnackySays.com. Welcome or welcome back to my podcast. Today we are just going to be chitty chatting. I have a couple of things top of mind, so I thought I would hit record. So a little bit of housekeeping. Um, there's some lawn mowing going on. <laughs> you, I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully not. But if so, that's our background music for today. And there's also some birds chirping. I am drinking coffee, so you might hear me picking up the cup or sipping here and there. So let's get into it. Um, I don't know if you know, but I love paranormal romance books. I've always been a fan of um, fantasy, sci-fi, any kind of time loop movie or TV show, alternate, alternate, alternative. Ugh. I actually wrote that someplace today. I have to go back and change that. Alternative universes, or is it an alternate? No, alternative, <laughs> alternative. Yes, alternative universe. Okay, yeah, I love I love that type of um, that type of movie or TV show. Anything that is fantasy, but kind of like magical re real magical realism, right? Like kind of if two hundred years ago someone showed you a blender or a, a a blow dryer, right? Imagine you would think. Oh, wow, that's unreal. It's magic. Um, and so how did I get into paranormal romance? So I gave you a little bit of background. Like when I was a kid, I found um, mythology. And at the time, I was in Catholic school. And I liked it a lot because I liked mythology a lot because it was a story. Whereas going to Catholic school, I kind of felt like, well, this is a fact. This is true. And some of these stories are quite depressing, these real stories that really happen to people. Some of them were great, but I like the idea of reading um, what to me felt like a, a, a alternative <laughs> a religious text. But I could close the book and be done with it because that didn't really happen to someone. There wasn't really a bad um, or sad or tragic ending. Whereas, um, you know, thinking about if you're familiar with biblical stories like Sodom and Gomorrah, like, man, if only they didn't turn around, they wouldn't have turned to Saul. Like that stuff really, if I'm being honest, I still think, I still think about it like, ugh, man, that was a tough one, you know? Anyway, so fast forward years and years and years, I um, randomly, randomly came across a, a page that listed Nalini Singh's Slave to Sensation, that's the first book in her Side Changeling series, um, as like one of the best books in paranormal romance. And I was like, huh, okay. Then you know, I clicked on it, I ended up reading the book and to date I think there are 19 books in the series and I've read them all the bulk of which I borrowed from the library but um, as I caught up I started <clears throat> buying the audiobooks and ebooks as a matter of fact there's a, another book coming out so I thought I would give you a rundown of my favorite paranormal romance authors in case you're into paranormal romance Oh, I guess I should do a kind of definition or my definition of paranormal romance. It's basically think vampires, shapeshifters, uh, wizards, warlocks. It's like fantasy, um, mystical, and romance. That's a key factor, um, a key thread of all of the books that I'm about to mention. Um, there's there's romance at the the heart of it. There's sometimes politics and drama, and the ones I tend to love the most have comedy, um, like I'll just be reading and all of a sudden cackle. Uh, I would also say some of the best writing I've seen um, has been from paranormal romance authors. They really have a gift for um, phrasing and 
like drawing you into the story and no small feat because almost all of the authors I'm going to mention in a moment, they're deep into their series, like over 12 books. And to keep telling, it's like the never, remember that movie? It's like the never ending story to keep telling a story from different points of views, like with, with, time jumps and all of that is it's it's quite a gift so let's get into it so i already mentioned nalini singh she has um quite a few series under her belt but i tried to get into guild hunters i think that's what it's called but i'm just so used to reading um her side changeling series so i'm going to highly recommend the side changeling series again i've read all of the books and for my money, I feel like there's only one book that you can probably skip. And I'm not going to say which one, I don't think, because you might totally disagree with me. Um, and I don't want to ruin any anything um, for anyone. Because sometimes you'll see reviews and I, I'll see reviews of books, a book that I've read and had I seen that review, maybe I wouldn't have read it. Now, it's not that it's a terrible book at all. It just didn't draw me in. And unlike the other books in her series, I only read it once and it was a slog. But there's some things that get said in that book that feed into um, the next part of the series. Okay, so that's Nalini Singh Sai Changeling series. And by the way, that series goes up to 15 books. And then it starts a new series with... Um, the same characters or a lot of the same characters and that's Psy Changeling, the Psy Changeling Trinity. So depending on where you're looking, you'll see it as one long set like book one to 19, one long series, or you'll see it broken up. Start with Psy Changeling. I am loving the Psy Changeling. Oh, there were two books. I am loving the Psy Changeling Trinity series. I'm just going to tell you, actually, I didn't enjoy the second book in the series, Ocean Light. I am in the minority based on the reviews that I've seen. And that's another book that I, that I only read um, that I only read once. OK, so that's Nalini Singh. Next is these kind of are not in order of importance, except I would say Nalini Singh is my um my favorite and the one that I've read the most. I've read the books over and over again. And I should mention, I also, what these books have in common is I also tend to listen to them and really love the, um, the narrators for, for, different, for different reasons. Um, okay, so that's Nalini Singh's I Changeling series and the narrator is Angela Daw. Um, next up, J.R. Ward, she's another author that has a whole bunch of different series. And she had written, I think, a few books before she started this series. This one, um, I feel like it's probably, I think, yeah, I think it's safe, safe to say it's her, her most popular series. Um, this one is about vampires and a different take on it than I think you might find in other books in a whole other different, like, origin story um for, for me this series and again i've read not all of the books this time around but most of them i'm only missing two and that was just kind of by choice because i felt like i wasn't interested and therein lies kind of the issue for me i think she can be hit or miss and she i've i've watched interviews with her she does lives sometimes um, and she's even said like, oh, I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that book. It didn't, it was, it was totally off. And, um, there are one or two major inconsistencies and she has copped to it. It was like, oh, that shouldn't have been there. So something is an absolute fact in one book. And then kind of casually mentioned in another book, someone does something and you're like, wait a minute, he's not supposed to be able to to do that what what did I miss and I literally like went through like went back and went through other books and I was like huh and then I saw an interview with her and she said oh yeah that was that shouldn't have been in there that was a mistake and I get it because when you have so many books it's easy to, for, for something to fall through the cracks so check it out um 
I really do love this series. I just read the last book in the series and I feel like she's, um, not she's, the story is coming back. The last three books or so, and I should also say this main series has two offshoots and I've read books from those offshoots and those offshoots, they're like, like mini series adjacent with some of the same characters. I think they're just two or three books each. Um, I'm super interested in one coming up, but again, for me, this is a hit or miss series. So, um, and I should have said this with Nalini Singh, you don't need to start with the first book. Um, I happened to start with the first book with Nalini Singh. I did not start with the first book with the J.R. Ward series. I started like third or fourth or seventh or something like that. And I was fortunate in that where I started was this was a sweet spot. It was like a sweet run um, for her books. I really started in a sweet spot. And then when I went back, I was kind of like, eh, I don't like this one. Oh, I don't really, you know, get that. But, um, okay, let's move on. Next, I'm going to mention Talia Hibbert. This is just a novella, but it was a, it was a cute, fun read. It's called Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. Uh, and she wrote this a few years ago now, but she like yeah 2018 it was a long time it was like quite a few years ago but she has plans um she even recently mentioned this year that she is still working on um bringing this series on home i think it's going to be another series of novellas but it was very cute so i'm mentioning it here next we have shelly lawrenson i've read she has um a ton of books. I feel like I'm saying that for each author, but it's true. Uh, I've read the last three in her series, The Honey Badger Chronicles, and this is part of a larger um, shapeshifter universe that she has tons of books for that I haven't read. But I mention her because each one of her, <laughs> her books, it's like I'm just I'm chuckling already. She each one of her books had at least like a line or two or three. Like she just she's funny. Her writing is really funny and and it's unexpected and I and um I don't know like comedic timing. It's just ugh. Like I have cackled reading um reading her books. I actually need to finish the last one. There are four books in this um, series so far. And I read the first three, started the fourth and didn't finish it. Not because it's not good. It was just like a, um, it just wasn't a good time for me to be like sitting around reading. Um, and the narrator's change in this series, I've read both the eBooks and, um, and I've listened to them but I am sorry, I don't remember their names. Um, it's easier when one, when the same person is reading, you know, 20 books back to back. Okay. Um, do check it out. Like I'll, I'll just tell you, she has a line in one of the books where she says, I think it was the very first book. Ugh, you know, get off the cross. We need the wood. Ugh, God, I, I cackled at that. I cackled. Um, Okay, next is a really new author to me who I came across via Nalini Singh or or maybe someone else's book, but the the acknowledgments um, included Nalini Singh and Cressley Cole. And I was like, who's this Cressley Cole? Because of course I recognize Nalini Singh's name. And I looked her up and the first thing that popped up was Immortals After Dark. So I, um, I think I'm almost caught up with this series. Again, there are a lot of books. I just bought the last book um, called Monroe. I finished listening to it. It's an excellent series. There is some humor, there is romance, um, and this one is a pretty big mystical world in that it has vampires and Valkyrie and um, warlocks and witches, just berserkers, like you name it, they're, they're in here. The genius, the genius of this series, which I have not seen in any other series, whether or not it's paranormal romance that I've read anyway, is that there are all of these characters and each book um, is like during the same time period. And 
like sometimes you'll read three different books and you're, and you're like, oh my gosh, I remember when this happened in that other book. And so it's the same, not the whole book, but there'll be parts or scenes where you're seeing it told from a, a totally different um, perspective. It's, it's amazing what, what she's done. I've never seen anything like it. And I've been wanting to talk about this series. I've, I've actually typed it into my newsletter several times and then deleted it because I think it's hard, at least it was hard for me to articulate it. And maybe I'm not even doing that now, but it's easier to talk for a few minutes than to try to be succinct um, in, in a paragraph or less in a newsletter. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to chat about paranormal um, romance. I said I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Let me just check and make sure I didn't forget. Yeah, those are the, th the few four, uh, the few authors in series, that's what I want to say, series that I've really um, been into the last few years. J.R. Ward, um, I am keeping up but I'm borrowing books at this point. I haven't bought, bought one of her books since 2019, um, just because I think, like, like I said, they can be a little hit or miss. But after reading this last book, which I borrowed from the library, I feel like maybe she's been laying some groundwork for future stories. And I think it's about to, to take off again in a really good way. And I'm very excited about um, her next book. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy that one. I have a good feeling about it. Okay. So other things I wanted to talk about, um, doing, so I had a episode and I'll put it in the show notes, um, on a podca podcast episode, which was formerly a newsletter episode called totally unrelated micro starts. And I have another real life example of that that I've been experiencing the last couple of months, maybe less than two months. So at the end of my newsletter, way at the bottom, I used to say something like, um, I am slowly and lovingly adding to my YouTube channel. And it was really glacial. Like I would make plans to post to YouTube I would create these things in Canva that I that I thought I would like make a loom video and, and walk through something and, and chat about like a, a whole bunch of different um, ideas. And I would just not end up posting things. Or I had plans and I mentioned in my newsletter probably a couple of times last year and oh my gosh, maybe the year before, oh, I'm going to do a digital, I'm going to create a digital magazine. Well, I never, I never did it. And so... <laughs> During the last several months of my fitness journey, um, I make that sound like there was an end to the journey. This year, and starting at the end of, of last year, 2021, I started watching um, YouTube videos, fitness and health YouTube videos, and I just went down this rabbit hole, and I've talked about that in, in, um, in another episode elsewhere, about food and fitness. I'll put that in the show notes, too. Um, but as a result, starting with that first video I watched from Dr. Eckberg, um, Stan Eckberg, um, I started watching more and more YouTube videos, calling it YouTube University. And as I watched them, I would see different YouTubers just, just as a part of their day, like what I eat in a day, um, my workout, you know, plan with me they would show a clip of them editing videos. And um, that would just be in my mind, like like in the, in the background. And then YouTube, <laughs> for some reason, started showing me shorts, like YouTube shorts. And I started getting lost in them, all things I was interested in. I guess they really know what they're doing when they they um, show, you, show you videos. And so this, was a subconscious thing going on in my mind that, hey, maybe I could do it. Just to give you context, I have tried to edit videos in the past and got really frustrated and felt like I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but seeing over and over and over again as just a micro part of someone else's YouTube video, but seeing it over and over again over several months, 
I got into my head like, hey, if they can sit there and do this, I can do it too. I can figure it out. Now, this, this story is not going to end with me telling you how I'm now editing videos. But what I did do was one day I um, clicked on the, the YouTube app, the button create YouTube short. And I was like, huh, I kind of just played around with it. And then I Googled how to make a YouTube short and YouTube has like a five minute video on it. And I said, oh, I should do that. And I did it. And I posted a 15 second video of my life, um, of what I was eating, my life in 15 seconds. And I thought, huh, okay, I can do this. And I did it the next day and the next day. And it's now been almost two months. And every day I post a 15 second video um, of what I'm eating or what I'm doing. And it's just a slice of my life. And it's very doable. Uh, so I'm not yet at the point where I'm editing videos. If you go back and watch uh, my first video, I, I like picked a song. I, I don't even know if I wrote anything. Maybe I wrote something. But over time, I learned like, oh, I can adjust the music. Like the first week or two, I did not more than that. I didn't know. So you'll notice that all of the videos just had the first 15 seconds of whatever song I picked. And then I realized like, oh, I can, <laughs> I can adjust the video. Um, and so I'm learning on the go. I try emphasis on trying not to get caught up in the number of, of views. I do look, um, and I do get caught up, but I try not to. I have also found that uh, when I don't get caught up, when I'm not looking, for some reason, those videos get the most views when I'm, I'm pretty detached. Now, I'm not like a big YouTuber, and I don't know what you consider a great number, but when I post a video and I see that two people looked at it, and then another day uh, I post another video and it's 500 people, I'm ecstatic. Like I'm ecstatic really any number because nobody has to look at it at all. Um, but you know, like there's a certain number where I'm like, okay, I didn't send it to this many people. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wild strangers, as my mom would say, wild strangers are looking at it and it makes me feel good. So. To bring it on home about micro starts, if there's something you wanna do and that you're curious about and like me, it's you've kind of been watching other folks do it, start small. I mean, I'm not even posting 60 seconds, 30 seconds of my life. It's, it's just like each segment is two seconds or three seconds and it is extremely doable. Um, as I get more curious, as time goes on, maybe I'll do 30 second clips. Maybe I'll start doing voiceovers, you know? Um, I've started adding text and like different types of text and different colors and posing questions. That's fairly new um, at the end. Like have a, like have a, I might say something like, have a great weekend or how are you doing today? Um, and looking, looking for opportunities, but not making it like, oh, I have to, like, I recorded a meal, okay, more than one meal, that didn't look very good. Not, not picture worthy maybe, but I took that picture, I filmed that video, and it'll be on my YouTube because that's what's going on. You know, yesterday I was beyond tired. I was too tired to make it look pretty and too hungry. Um, but you know, I don't think that's what I posted yesterday, right? Yeah, I don't think that's what I posted, but I'll post it at, at some point. Okay, so those are basically the two things I wanted to chitty chat about. Um, if you're not into paranormal romance, check out the authors I mentioned, or just go to your bookstore and check out the paranormal um, romance section. There are other plenty other um, authors that are popular that I've read about and heard about and I've checked out their books and been like it's all right it's okay not my cup of tea 
and again, I'm in the minority. So um, you can use my suggest not suggestions, but the books I like and the authors I like as a jumping off point. And again, I mentioned series or books that I've enjoyed from them, um, but they have, they're all extremely talented women, women, um, and they have a whole bunch of books. And they're not all paranormal romance. Like Talia Hibbert's claim to fame as far as I'm concerned, are romance books and not paranormal romance um, in particular. She has the Brown Sisters series. Um, I am going to type, you're probably going to hear this. Uh, Eve Brown, I think was the last one. Actor Age, Eve Brown was the last one. Um, I actually really loved the first one. I'm going to see if I can... No, I, I did love the first one, but my favorite is the second one. I'm going to tell you what that one is. Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. It's book number two. I believe I own this book. Yep, I have the ebook, and I think I also bought the audio book. It is absolutely my favorite of, of the three. Okay, I am going to end here. If you got this far, thanks for listening. One more recap. If there's something that you want to do, just start, even if it's micro or mini, if you, even if it's not on the scale, like again, I'm not up to doing full length yet. I haven't yet done a full length YouTube video that I edited where I am actually you know, walking around and doing more footage and then putting it together. But I am closer than I've ever been just by doing. Um, and I'm learning as I go. And I hope that you have a similar experience, whatever you choose to do. And then paranormal romance authors, like I said, I gave you a bunch that I enjoy. And if there are any that you enjoy that I haven't listed where you're like, what? I can't believe she didn't say this author of this series. Um, please shoot me an email or comment, uh, depending on where you're listening to this podcast, or maybe I'll put this on YouTube and I will definitely check them out. Thank you for listening. This is Jody, Jody Taylor of snackysays.com.